you mind not interrupting me when I'm working? Hi there, welcome to this little thing. Well, you can see what it is from the title. This isn't really so much a tutorial that I'd be expecting anyone to follow point for point and replicate exactly the same thing I do, you know. It's it's more so just letting you know how I do it, you know, give a bit of an insight, and you can maybe apply some of the methods to your own unique projects if you so wish. So uh, this video will be in two parts. This first part will be primarily on the music production stuff and how I go about putting all that together. And the second part will be on the vocals, you know, the sentence mixing in the auto-tuning, all that stuff. So, let us get started, shall we? So obviously, uh, the first step would be choosing what song you want to make a parody of. There's no real method to this exactly, it's just, you know, whatever comes to me. Um, I think Seven Nation Army was picked because I could slightly alter the iconic bass line to sound like Cortex's theme. And that was where that idea came from, and I just built on from that. I chose Toxic for a similar reason, actually. The guitar riff in the middle of the chorus has always kind of reminded me of that same theme. And thankfully, the rest of the song just very neatly molded around the different aspects of the Cortex boss fight tracks. Uh, Lonely This Christmas was because it was for Jimmy D's Christmas karaoke collab, and I thought that that song could work in the context of Cortex missing Crash, and it just sort of sort of seemed to fit. And I wasn't expecting to, but I managed to also get Cortex's leitmotif in through that chorus as well. <laughs> as well as getting the Crash Bandicoot 1 theme in the second verse when he's singing about Crash's escape, which that just all worked out really nicely. And uh, evacuate the dance floor. Actually, there wasn't really much reasoning to that one at all. <laughs> it just... Uh, I don't know, I like the song, and I suppose d despite it being kind of like a dance anthem kind of song, it sort of has a bit of a like sinister vibe to it in some parts, so it, I don't know, it just sort of worked. But for this video, we're going to be starting off fresh, with a completely new song, and I'm going to piece it all together over the course of this video. The song in question is none other than the classic, the beloved, the anthem of a generation. All Star by Smash Mouth. Obviously, one of the most important tools for music production is some music production software. And for me, that's this, the PlayStation Portable. Yeah, that wasn't a joke at the start, this is literally what I use. More specifically, I use a PSP game called Beaterator. Check out Timberland's sick moves on the title screen there. God knows how and why this game exists, but it does. I just got it in a shop years ago, just bought it on a whim, and... You know, if I didn't do that, and this is no exaggeration, about half the content on this channel wouldn't exist. <laughs> Similar to my choice of video editors, it might seem a bit unorthodox from an outside perspective, like why would I use this when there are probably way better choices out there? Well, the answer is... because I have this. Uh, so this is basically what Beta Eight is like, at least the uh, studio session mode. And yeah, this is basically how I put together all of my music. Some of it is made entirely on here. Sometimes I export the songs as MIDI files and then I convert them to MP3 using other programs. Just because you're sort of kind of limited in what sound fonts you can use here. I mean, Beaterator does have a lot of its own instrument samples, but what's really great is it gives you the option to use your own samples as well. And to do that, literally all you need is a little audio file and you've got your own sample to use. It's, it's really as simple as that. I've built up a, a pretty big collection over the years of uh, different sounds. There's a lot of stuff in here from like Crash Bandicoot stuff, which we'll obviously be using today. I've also got some Spyro stuff, some Undertale stuff, Me Channel stuff, Spiral Mouth stuff. Yeah, various different things that you've uh, no doubt heard a lot of in my remixes and things. Yeah. <laughs> 
So for this one, I'm going to recreate the instrumental for All Star with some uh, classic Cortex-esque instrumentation. Um, I've already got the main samples I want to use. We've got the iconic guitar. This is the one from Warped. I do also have the original Crash 1 guitar. Um, I had to take that directly from the track and kind of isolate it a bit. But most of these were ripped directly from Warped, not by me, by Burby over on the soundsresource.com. Uh, it took a while to dig through all the files, but I found quite a lot of the iconic instruments in there. Then you just need to sort of pitch them all up or down so that they're all middle C. Basically, Beaterator can't read the pitch of an audio file, so it just takes everything as middle C. So as long as you can pitch it yourself, then then you're fine. You can basically use anything you want as a sample. Um, just to demonstrate, I'm going to take something really random here, just to show you what I mean. Um, let's go for say, something from Mario Head here, because he's got a good kind of sing-songy voice, and it's all isolated, there's no background noise or anything like that. You're fantastic! I, we'll take that little bit there, the, the fan in Fantastic. Uh, which I believe is a B. Yeah, Audacity is also telling me that it's a B, so that's good. So we'll just increase it by one semitone up to a C, and we got it. Uh, we'll just get rid of that little gap at the start as much as we can. We want it to start instantly. And then we save that as a WAV file at a project rate of 44,100 hertz. And then once you've done that, you plug your PSP into the USB slot. Open up the Beta Rater folder in the music folder, and then you just plop it in there so the Beta Rater can find it. And just like that, we've got a new instrument we can use. So I'll just uh, put together some little tune with that so that you can see what it's like. Nice. Okay. Yeah, and there you go. It's it's literally as simple as that. So, uh, for All Star, what I'm actually going to do is sample some of the drums, which, you know, that's also very much an option if you can do it, to sample from the original song. I think for Domination Army and Lonely This Christmas, I built those completely from scratch and just used uh, Crash Sound Fonts and other various instruments and stuff like that. Whereas for uh, Frozen Antarctic, I sampled quite a lot of the original instruments from Toxic, to the point where I basically recreated most of it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's strange. It's a funny thing, like, you're taking apart a pre-existing song only to then just put it back together again. I was very lazy with Activate the Dance Bot, though. I basically just built another couple layers on top of the existing instrumental. Uh, fun fact, during Robotnik's little part in that song, I used the exact same samples that I teach Vader used for Win the Race. Alright, so I've got all the stems from All Star here. I got these from uh, Mr. Mimnia here on YouTube. Gonna sample the percussion for this. It's a pretty simple song, so I'm gonna use like the typical Cortex instruments and stuff for the actual melodies, but we'll do the drums. So, um, what I could very easily do here is just sample an entire loop like this. If I were to take this section here, and I could just save that as its own sample. And then providing that I match the BPM perfectly with the original song in Beaterator, then I could just have that going on loop smoothly. But I'm not going to do that, because where's the fun in that? Instead, I'm going to do something that's way more complex for exactly the same result. <laughs> um, I'm going to isolate every single drum sound individually. And then I'm going to piece them back together in Beaterator. You know, who knows, I, I might want to use these for something else eventually later on. So uh, it would be good to have them. So uh, we'll do this little build-up bit first. This is just two different sounds, so that's pretty easy. Do the same as before, just delete the little gap at the beginning so it starts instantly. There's no delay or anything. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to lengthen it just a little bit so that it doesn't cut off too early, um, so that the sound will kind of carry over a little bit into the next one like it would do naturally, you know? Even like as short and sharp as a drum hit is, it doesn't just immediately cut off when the next one starts. You know, there's a little, there's a small echo, there's a bit of a reverb left over, so I don't want to get rid of that at the risk of it sounding too artificial, you know? I want it to sound kind of natural. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to take this little end bit here and I'm just going to have it gradually slow down. Oh, actually, that doesn't work because there's a little cymbal sound in there. I didn't realize that. Okay, that's going to be... <laughs> that little cymbal sound is going to be out of tempo, so uh, I'll just get this little end bit a little bit after the cymbal sound starts. I'll also make that fade out a little bit too. 
Okay, good. Now that's one down. Save that at 44,100 hertz. We'll call it smash beat one. And then we'll do the same thing with the second one. It's just a very small thing. Call that smash beat two. I'll remember what all of these mean later on, so it's fine. Right, now let's get that cymbal crash. That does actually surprisingly cut off as soon as the next beat hits, but, you know, we'll lengthen it a little bit anyway. Just for good measure, we'll call that smash cymbal crash. Uh, now we need the hit, or whatever it's called, the drum sound, like the normal, like, you know that? Uh, the little cymbal tap sound in between. We need the snare, obviously. Um, and then there's that tiny little extra beat right before the loop restarts. In fact, is that the same as those build-up beat sounds? Not quite. I'll, I'll do it as its own thing. I'll do it as its own thing. Uh, we'll call that smash... tap. <laughs> okay, I think that's all we need to get started on actually putting it all together now. The uh, the BPM of All Star is 104, apparently. I just googled that. But, you know, if you can't find out by searching for it, you can use something like all8.com or something to work it out for yourself. Well, there's probably apps for it that you can work out the, the beats per minute. Uh, so let's start a new drum loop. We'll do the little build-up bit as its own single bar first. So yeah, drum loops, uh, well, obviously because drums aren't notes, they're just sounds, you can have up to eight different drum sounds in a single loop, which is way more than we need. Let's import smash beat one. There we go, and smash beat two. Put those in. That, hmm, that actually sounds too slow, I think. Is All Star 104 BPM? I think it might be a little bit faster. Let's put it up to 106, maybe. That's a bit better, okay. Now we'll add the uh, cymbal crash, and then the two snares right at the end. Actually, I'm gonna put it up to a 107. Yeah, that sounds right, that's that's good. So, okay, that's one loop. Uh, it's not actually gonna loop like this in the song, I'm just gonna play it once before we get into the main loop. So let's start a fresh loop. We'll make this one four bars, even though it's actually going to repeat the same bar four times. But I'll, I'll do it four bars anyway, just because it, it there'll be less things in the in the whole track then, and I can organize it all nicely. Right, so we put in smash hit, <laughs> smash hit. <laughs> That's funny. I didn't realize I called it that. Uh, import the snare again for this one. There we go. Getting there. Now we need the symbol hit. And then the little tap right at the very end. There we go. Uh, and now what we can do is we can copy and paste that bar into the others. Is there another snare in there? There's another snare. Yeah, there is. I forgot that one. Whoops. Um, yeah, it's just there. I'm going to make that a bit quieter, though. How's that? Yes, that's perfect. Spot on. Okay, cool. We'll put those into the track, and boom, we got that. Yeah. Well, the years start coming and they don't stop coming Fed to the rules and I hit the ground running Didn't make sense not to live for fun Your brain gets smart but your head gets dumb So on and so forth Right, that's that done. Right, so now let's do some melody loops here. We'll start off with the bass, and the bass line for All Star goes like this. F sharp, C, C sharp, D sharp, G sharp, a sharp B and finishes off with C sharp before then looping back to F sharp to start over. So all together that sounds like this. Right, so I'm going to use the uh, iconic Cortex instrument that I was talking about earlier for this. I've called it Cortex Zing for some reason, I don't know why I called it that. So I'll just transpose that melody onto this. Mm-hmm. Yep. There we go. Simple as that. And uh, copy and paste those two bars onto three and four. And we've got our bass loop. Mm -hmm. 
That's good. That's good. That sounds good. And to go alongside that, uh, we need the uh, the bit that uh, in the song is a guitar sound, actually. That's just four chords. Now, I'm not well versed in chords. I don't really know what chords are what. Like, I mean, if you ask me to play like C minor or something like that, I'm not going to know what notes make that. Mm-hmm. Other than it's probably got a C in it, obviously. But thankfully, I've got Synthesia hooked up to my keyboard, so I can just play like, a random chord like this. And uh, there you go, Synthesia is telling me that that's A minor. So uh, Synthesia tells me that these four chords in All Star that we need are F sharp major, C sharp major, G sharp major, and B major. And those in the rhythm of the song will sound something like this. So uh, for these, I'm going to use the uh, pizzicato sound. So uh, we'll put those same chords in. There we go. Actually, you know, that that sounds a bit too heavy. I, I think I'm, yeah, I'm going to get rid of the bottom ones and just leave it with those top two notes. Yeah, that's better. That's better. That just sounds like lighter. You know, it's not such a big forceful sound. Um, and I'll do the same with the other two. Yep, that sounds all right. OK, we'll copy and paste those onto three and four. And we've got our second loop. So let's see what that sounds like all together, shall we? That actually sounds pretty good. That's actually pretty good. I mean, it's, it is a really simple song, but I was not expecting it to be that easy to put together. <laughs> that was really good. I'm going to add another layer to the bass, actually, when the drums kick in on the, you know, the ears start coming and they don't stop coming on that bit. So I'm going to take the Cortex Zing loop, this one, and I'm going to clone that onto a different track and then just replace the sound with Cortex bass. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Just to just to kind of thicken it up a bit when the drums kick in. Let's see what that sounds like. Um, actually, I might add a bit of reverb on the pizzicato, a sort of echo to it, just so it doesn't sound quite so stilted, you know. I really like that. I do. That's that's actually come out really well <laughs> for a first draft. That that went. That sounds really good, actually. Looks like fun, doesn't it? Anyway, in the next part, I'll probably have the instrumental all finished, so we can move on to what, for a lot of you, is probably the more interesting part: the vocals. So I'll see you then. I don't know when that's going to come out. Maybe sometime later this month. But uh, yeah, see you in the next part.